Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to Kane University. Muy buenos días a todos y bienvenidos a Kane University. On behalf of the Kane University Board of Trustees, we extend our greetings. It's, it's great this morning to see everyone here walking here in this beautiful morning. Uh, I, I just cannot believe that we are starting a new academic year here at Kane University. And uh, it is a great day to start. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, everyone here is excited. And we are looking forward to a vibrant and excellent and, and a very productive year here at Kane University. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, remind everyone that uh, you are invited to a brunch at Liberty Hall, and this will take place immediately following the president's address. So keep that in mind and please join us. And uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce the president of Kane University, Dr. Dawood Farahi. Thank you, Ada. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I'm good. Good morning. Good morning. That was a good applause, so the amount of food has been doubled. The football team has been, and the football team has been barred from attendance. You guys heard that? Uh, the, so the soccer team people are usually happy when the football team is not around. So good morning, everyone. Isn't it a gorgeous morning? Did you feel how beautiful it was outside? And I can absolutely take no credit for that. I called Al Roker last night. It's probably he did it, right? And the campus, have you walked around the campus and see how gorgeous it looks? Yep. So we need to thank Phyllis Duke and the facility staff for doing such a spectacular job. And I hope today you have an opportunity to walk around campus and see the freshmen came in yesterday, over 800 of them. You should see those beautiful eyes and all the hope in those eyes. And then you realize why we do what we do. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. And it's going to be a great academic year here at Kane University. Let me express my gratitude to the Board of Trustees, especially to the Chair, Trustee Helen Payne Baltimore, Trustee Linda Lewis, and also, as always, a great friend, my hometown mayor, two times graduate of Kane University, Mayor Chris Bulwich, and Ann Evans Estabrook, a great donor to the university, just walked in and a great supporter of the institution. And of course, the president of our alumni association, Mr. Ed Esposito. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to report to you that we begin this new academic year with a strong wind on our back and our eyes far into the horizon. Our enrollment is growing. Our financial outlook is strong and stable. Fundraising is on the rise. And our campuses, both here in New Jersey and China, are thriving. The Middle States Commission on Higher Education last year reaffirmed the university's accreditation to 2022. And I want to thank all of you who rolled up your sleeves and contributed countless hours to make this process work. King University and the students deserves no less. I appreciate specifically the efforts of our provost, Dr. Jeff Tony, and the Office of Accreditation and Assessment for a great job well done. <laughs> and
And that's not the only thing that happened in that area. Once again, thanks to teamwork, when Joe Kane University received the stamp of approval from the Middle State Commission on Higher Education, from the Chinese Ministry of Education, now we are a full-blown, fully certified, full-scale university in China. the only American public university that can say that to you. But right now, I want to spend a little time telling you what we have done this past year and describe to you where we're going. Kane has always been about opportunity, and that is not nothing new today. That's part of our mission. That is part of our commitment to our students. But what we do now is to provide that affordable opportunity with the qualitatively superior programs right here at Kane University. These qualitatively superior programs, some of the most innovative in the nation, are right here at your own university. And you know what? Our students love the facilities, the environment, the academic program, their faculty, and above all, the research and opportunities that are available to them. If you don't believe me, take a look. Kane University has given me more opportunities than I could ever imagine. All the new improvements on campus, all the opportunities that are here right now are amazing, and I think the more that we're building, the more opportunities that are gonna come for students that they can take advantage of and experience Kane University. The Green Lane building, the second you look at it, you can tell that it's not an average building. It must be something to do with creativity or design. It really lightens up this entire side of the campus and the whole area. The new design studio at Green Lane is great because we decided to make it feel and look like an actual functioning studio. Everything is top of the line if you would find it a top agency in the city. We're evolving so much that we're not just seen as a small university anymore. Today when I walked in and I was like, wow, so much space, everything's so bright, and we have the cafe. It's legit. It's really cool. It's great to see them building the new multi-purpose field for the football, soccer, field hockey. They have all different sports playing on this field all throughout the season. The athletes work really hard here and they deserve something to show for all their hard work. It's just really great how much of a family sense there is on the campus. The goal of OT is really to help anyone and everyone to participate in the activities that mean the most to them. Having all of these new things coming and actually being able to like be the first class to use it, it's really exciting. The Vaughn Ames building is the performing arts building, so there's going to be a dance studio, a scene shop, and a costume shop. We're getting the best technology now. We have these great spaces. They have the STEM building, which they built in 09, which was great. I had organic chemistry there. And there's also a new building on North Ave, which I feel like the new students coming in are going to love. You can study here at Union, which is only 30 minutes from New York City. They just built a new building down the shore at Kane Ocean. And we could even study overseas at the Wenzhou Kane campus in China. Being able to say that we're one of the few institutions in the United States that has a campus in China is something I'm really proud of. The Wenzhou campus is beautiful. Students will get not only an Americanized education, but a cultural experience and the Kane University world-class seal. I love Kane because it's world-class education right down the street. I just felt like it was a place that I felt home at. I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the people I met here. You know, it was just, I felt, I felt comfortable here. I've been here for quite a while and I love what I'm seeing. Kane's getting bigger and better. It gets me excited, it gets me excited for tomorrow, it gets me excited to be here. I can only imagine how much better it's going to be within the next five years. It, it makes me glad to see that the school is not just staying static and is actually branching out. It's exciting. It's, uh, it's good coming back after a summer and then seeing something so new, so fresh. It's like you're coming back to a different school, but it's still the same Kane that you're coming to. <clears throat> Many of our initiatives of 2020, Vision 2020, are being put in place now. Not only we have a vision for the future, we also have a plan. Thanks to Sue Bousquet and the University Planning Council, we have charted out where we're going until the year 2020. Thank you, Susan and thank you the University Planning Council. One of the components of this plan is to create a world-class global business school. We did, 
It's in Green Lane, and Dr. Michael Cooper has started that process, and we have taken students into that new school. This is the first semester we started at school. It already has over 120 students in it. We are leveraging Michael's connections all over the world and created an advisory group of powerful business executives all over the world, chaired by a graduate of this university, Mr. Joe Sheridan, who is the president and chief operating officer of Wakefern, the largest employer in the state of New Jersey. We have also reconfigured our global business program, and thanks to Vassal Yusufi, that program is moving forward. We have locations now in six different places throughout the world, including Wenzhou, China. Our students will have opportunities that no student of a public university in New Jersey can have at the affordable prices that we offer. We're also in the process of working a deal with CNBC for a business, global business temperature poll that will be done in the beautiful Green Lane building, and that will give us the name recognition throughout the world. In the sciences, George Chang and Pete Bostian are doing fantastic things. We have, Pete, are you here someplace? There you go. We have created an institute of life sciences entrepreneurship that would enable researchers and scientists from all over the world to take their inventions into innovations and produce pharmaceutical drugs right in that pipeline. No other university will take advantage of the opportunities that are now available in this state as the premier state of pharmaceutical companies to do exactly what we're doing now. Keith is also doing STEM programming in the summer for high school students to come right here at Kane University and see what we have. And hopefully someday they choose to come to our STEM program. Our STEM program is one of the best in the state with a four-year graduation rate second only to Princeton, over 80%. George Chang has also reconfigured the programs in computer science, and we do have things that many universities wish they had. Pat Morial just received a $620,000 National Science Foundation grant this year for her research with Kane students. Luis Jimenez, this year's undergraduate teacher of the year, um, student researcher of the year, is developing an application that would enable people to find accessible spots on campuses. I'd be more than happy to share that with any other university in New Jersey who wants it. Professor Carolee Stewart Gardner received a major grant from the NSF to address the shortage of young women entering in the computer science field. And across the globe, in Wenzhou, China, our students took the second and third place in two different programming con uh, contests offered by Microsoft China. <laughs> Not to be outdone by the science deans, the dean of education has been hard at work. Our secondary education program was named and rated the highest by the National Council on Teacher Quality. And once again, and once again, five years in a row now, Susan, or four? Yeah, I thought you'd correct me on that one. 100% of Kane graduates who set for the Proxis II exam, which is the certification exam for being a teacher, passed it. And for the second year in a row, a graduate of Kane, Kathleen Assini, was chosen the Teacher of the Year 
for the state of New Jersey. And in February of 2015, she will receive the National Education Association Awards for Teaching Excellence, one of the highest prestigious awards in the nation. And the year, thanks. And the year before, you all re remember that Lauren Morocco, another graduate of King, received the New Jersey Teacher of the Year Award and met with President Obama. Susan, what about this year? It better happen. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be the Dean of Education in Winjo. <laughs> she wants to go to Winjo, but no, she has to stay. Dean Pollerstock and Dean Chang also worked with Union County College and received a $3 million grant from the U.S. Department of Education in partnership with Union County College to make sure that we attract Hispanic and low-income students into the science field. This five-year program will be great. This grant was the result of hard work by James Lerman, Susan Gannon, Drs. Anthony Pittman, Walsh, Paul Croft, and Brian Teasdale. The College of Visual and Performing Arts, under the leadership of George Rasimovich, continues to provide the students and the community with some of the best fine arts, theater, and music programming in the state. Last year, we had over 31,000 people come to Kane University, galleries, museums, and Low Hall in this very theater. John Wooten and the Premier Stages continue to wow the critics. They did a unique thing for senior citizens in Westfield who participated in their own playwriting exercise, produced it, acted in it. That was a fantastic thing to, to see. In design, Professor Rose Ganella and her colleagues continue to push to make our design program the top choice in the region. Our industrial design students receive top honors in design for safety competition. Three of our students, Dominic Delello, Alex Royanka, and Michael Blaine, under the direction of Professor Matthew Johnson, brought distinction to this university. <laughs> Dr. Michael Searson in the School of Global Education and Innovation received another grant on Star Talk from the United States Department of Defense. And now, Kane University is listed as a program, as a national center for teaching Hindi in Urdu. Thank you, Michael. Job well done. And in the graduate programming under Dean Jeffrey Beck, we have a lot to report to you. Our PsyD program cohort, the second group, were placed. This year, seven out of eight of them were nationally placed. And that placement rate for Kane University in the last two years was 94%. The national average is only 70%. Dr. Lori Ness in the Occupational Therapy Program received accreditation for the maximum number of years possible, 10 years. The new OT clinic will make the application rate even go higher. Today, over 300 qualified people and students apply to our OT program, and we can only accommodate 36 of them. Lori, you can do something about that. Where are you? Mm-hmm. And our speech pathology program under Dr. Marty Schulman receives 400 qualified applications for only 50 spots, a 15% increase this year alone. Our program in speech pathology is not only the best in the state of New Jersey, but one of the best 
in the United States of America. And Marty, you're working on a doctoral program, right? That's a good answer. Yep, is much better than yes. And where's Dr. Virginia Fitzsimmons? There's Virginia. Virginia continues to put this university on the map. We didn't think it will happen, but our PhD program in nursing at Kane Ocean attracted 24 qualified people for the doctoral program starting this last January. And then Virginia didn't stop at that. She put in for a grant and got $300,000 for scholarship for those 24 students to go to school here. That is one spectacular achievement. But that's some of the highlights of what we have done. Now let's take a look of what we will do in the next three years. We want to welcome three very dynamic academic leaders to this campus in the areas of architecture, physical therapy, and physician assistant. These three programs are vital components of our strategic plan and will bring distinction to the university and serve the needs of the nation. The first, we welcome David Mooney. David, are you here? Please stand up to be recognized. David led the University of Kentucky College of Design, one of the best known in the country. David also taught at the Institute for Architecture and Urban, Cities, Urban Studies in New York, the Graduate School of Design at Harvard, and the Southern California Institute of Architect in Los Angeles. A practicing architect, he was educated at Harvard College and Princeton School of architecture. David serves on both the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation Board of Directors and the Frank Lloyd Wright, the Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture Board of Governors. Working with Professor Ganella, David is developing an innovative architecture curriculum that will distinguish both Kane USA and Wenzhou Kane University in this field. David gets a huge leg up on the competition in this field because our architecture school now will officially carry the name and endorsement and advisement of the world, one of the world's most premier architects, Michael Graves. <laughs> Michael is credited with broadening the role of the architect in society in raising public interest in good design, essential and sustainable living. His impact on the field cannot be overstated. We are proud to share his vision with our students and create one of the best architecture program in the nation. We're also proud to report to you that President Obama just recently appointed Mr. Graves to the National Access Board. We will officially celebrate the naming of the architecture school in the honor, in honor of Mr. Graves in October, but here's a quick look at what we will do with that school. The Michael Gray School of Architecture is a new school of architecture in America, and it's unique in several ways. First of all, it has two campuses, one here in the metropolitan New York, New Jersey region, and the other in Wenzhou, China. This school of architecture will really focus on the idea of public space today. It's political idea, it's a rational reason for being, it's context within the site. Michael was my teacher. He was the best architecture teacher I ever had. But you look at the nature of the work that he's carried out and the fact that he has done so much to affect American architectural history through the particular projects that he's done in defining a particular kind of style, but also in the quantity that he has done. He really is, in many ways, reinvented the idea of what it is to be a professional architect today. The architecture school that we've designed, I'm so proud of. 
it's, I think, an A+. Plus. It's one of my better buildings, if not my best building. We're really pleased with it. In 2016, we will inaugurate our physical therapy program, one of the fastest growing fields in allied health. We all need parts. We all need something, knee replacement, hip replacement. We live a little longer than we used to. Kane University and our students will be ready for that market. So I want you to welcome officially Dr. Shannon Clifford, the new executive director of our physical therapy program. Prior to coming to Kane, she was chair of the physical therapy department at Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York, and she has published several articles in the Journal of Physical Therapy and Spine. Welcome to Kane University, Dr. Clifford, and her home will be the new academic building at the corner of North and Morris Avenue, our gateway to Elizabeth. The third component of this academic hat trick is our physician assistant program, which also will make its home in the North Avenue building. According to the United States Department of Labor, between now and 2020, the physician assistant field will increase by 38%. Kane will be ready for it. In 2017, our physician assistant program will go into operation under the leadership of Dr. Medea Valdez. Welcome to Kane. <laughs> Dr. Valdez has almost 20 years of instructional and administrative experience before coming to Kane, the last 14 years teaching at Weill Cornell Medical School. Thank you for choosing Kane, and thank you for coming to Kane University. <laughs> David, Shannon, and Medea are part of a largest group of faculty ever since we moved to the Union facility where we could check the records, being hired at Kane. Over 60 people. 60 full-time faculty in one year. So please stand up and be recognized by your colleagues today. <clears throat> Thank you. You'll only see about 38 to 40 of them here. The rest are in Wenjo. Kane University, and I'm told it's thunderstorms and raining in Wenzhou, but we'll try to get you connected, and I want all of you to say welcome to our Wenzhou Kane faculty members as well. They're 13 hours behind us, so it's almost midnight at Wenzhou Kane. Yeah. How are you? Hello, Kane University. Greetings from Wenzhou. We uh, suffered through the storm, and I'm told we suffered through the storm, but the clouds broke, th lightning went away, thunder went away, and we're having a great time on the great stairwell, stairway here, and you can see we have the new faculty directly behind me, and the staff, and we have chairman and an alumni, Frank Wong here. I want to congratulate Chin Chong and his staff Chin Chong and his staff did a yeoman's effort getting it ready throughout all the uh, storms we had. And uh, this place, you saw the, the, uh, the one shot when it came on, it is absolutely spectacular looking. This building will outshine anything in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Washington, <laughs> Beijing. We, we're over the top. Hey, Phil, I think the Chinese are keeping you. I hope so. Thank you very much, and let's say ni hao to all our faculty up there. 
We only speak English here. And on the Chinese side, the new boss over there, Frank Wang, was my student in 2001 or 2002. Uh, graduated from the Kane University MPA program. Welcome aboard, Frank. And you all recognize Sophia Howlett, the associate VP here. We send them over there to make sure the faculty got the same orientation as they do here. Uh, Frank, do you want to say something in English or Chinese? English, English only. English is good, yeah? <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. Welcome <laughs> Thank you, sir. Phil, it's almost midnight. Go to sleep and go to work. We work 24-7 here, Mr. President. How many of you believe them? <laughs> Thank you, guys, and welcome to Kane University. Welcome to Wenzhou Kane. We're looking forward to the great things you're planning to do. Thank you very much, and good night. We'll all have a great semester. How many of you in this room have actually been to China? Whoa, that's pretty good. In the next two to three years, I'm going to see to it that most of you do go to China. And once you see, and once you see, you will realize why we do what we do. Our students, because of the socioeconomic background, most of the time are unable to go to places like China due to the generosity of uh, some of our donors here at Kane and the relationship that we have with uh, Wenzhou Kane. Kane students whose programs are in Wenzhou Kane and who could fill their schedule with all the courses they need for a semester or a year at Wenzhou Kane if they sign up for Kane USA for both classes in residential, we will send them to Wenzhou Kane. We will give them a place to live, all the food that they need, plus Kane University will pick up their travel expenses. So I want to make sure the faculty explains to that to the students very clearly. We will pick up their travel expenses. We want to make sure that they understand that there's a whole world on the other side in China. This is an opportunity that's available to our students and not yet available to any other public university in America. The Chinese, the Chinese operation for us embodies the very philosophy of what we do, to provide opportunity for our students to compete in the global market and win, and win you will. China would also allow us to expand our global business opportunities for our global business students. The new architecture students will have an opportunity to study in China as well. And our computer science students would interact with some of the most digital savvy people on this planet. Just, just two weeks ago, we had over 80 students from Wenzhou Kane through an immersion program here. About a dozen or more of our students stayed with them 24-7 to prepare them not only for language, for the cultural differences and the economic and societal differences in America. I want to thank Janice Murray Lowry, Sophia Howlett, and the students who made that an amazing experience for our Chinese students. Are you guys here? Well, come on, stand up. Maybe next year we'll send you to China. 
Do you want to go? Do you want to take the soccer team with you? Uh, I'm thinking about it. Do we have anything that could show what happened with the soccer team when we send them to China? Manny? Okay, let's see. In 2012, Dr. Farah, he visioned a soccer match between Wenzhou University and Kane University. We had a 13 and a half hour flight, arrived in Beijing. We got to experience the uh, marketplace. Some of us were a little more adventurous. We ate a scorpion, some squids, a seahorse. And we got the chance to see the Forbidden City and the Great Wall. My favorite part of the trip was passing the Great Wall. Can't ask for a better experience than that. The day after, we went and played Beijing Sports University. From Beijing, we went to Hongzhou. It was really magnificent. We saw the West Lake. We played against Beijing University while we were there. Playing against those teams, it definitely made me realize how open soccer is. Then we went to Wenzhou, and we started off seeing the city. But the best part when we got to go and see the university, everyone was just happy for us to be there. We were happy to be there. They prepared everything for us. The school, the buildings, even the soccer field. And the emphasis they have on English being spoken there. It can be used as an opportunity for students at Kane University to come over, learning how they perceive America, how I perceive China, and just coming to an agreement that we both love Kane. Soccer is the sport of the world. We showcase our talents and we show them how good soccer is here in America for the chance to come to China and represent Kane and fulfill Dr. Farahi's wish of this theoretical bridge. It's truly an honor. Is the soccer team here? What happened to the soccer team? They're practicing? Where are you guys? How come you're so far out there? Well, the, you lost to the Beijing University of Sports, didn't you? Yeah. Mm. They beat Zhejiang University that has about seven, 70,000 students in one of the top 10 universities in China. Our kids beat them. And Wenzhou University, I think you, huh? You slaughtered them? What was the number? Huh? How much? 13 to what? Uh, start doing that here. Our uh, athletic fields, you have seen it, we now sponsor and accommodate the competition statewide for football, soccer, and many other fields. And our kids really beat that field to death. So this summer, we redid that and fixed it up at Kane Speed. Done. We also, for the first time, put lights on our baseball field. And on Kane Day, which is September 12th, we will play the first ever night game right here in Jim Hines Stadium. So you're all invited. Please make sure you come. Uh, any, uh, any baseball players here? Ha, 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 ha.
you got your own field and you got your own lights, didn't you? You're supposed to say thank you. There you go. Another component of our strategic plan and our vision 2020 is to become the best in environmental and sustainability sciences, and we will. We received a $10 million grant from the state of New Jersey through the general obligation bond to build a research facility on the New Jersey Highlands in about a year or so. Felice tells me that all the regulation things are moving in that direction or not. We're all good. Well, the Highlands Commission, it takes a little while, but we will be there. We will be the only university with such a facility. There's something else. About a year and a half ago, Jim Hines told me that he and his friends bought about 300 acres of rainforest in Costa Rica that want to preserve it for eternity and help and the preservation of the planet. Paul Croft and Daniela Shivitz, are you guys here? Okay. They went uh, to Costa Rica on a National Science Foundation grant and came back and told me that they want to create a tropical rainforest research facility in Costa Rica, and Jim Hines has the land that if I could get it from him. Jim Hines is coming on September the 12th to watch the baseball under the lights, and I will be on him like a... <laughs> I hope next year at this time I could tell you that Kane University will have a research facility in Costa Rica. <laughs> Our strategic initiatives in many other areas also continued. In Liberty Hall, after cataloging the papers of Robert Winthrop Kane and some of the other things that we already had here at Kane University, the Na National Archives have now listed Kane University as an official source of congressional papers in New Jersey. So thank you, Aaron Algandor. Jonathan Mercantini and Elizabeth Hyde, are you guys here? Worked with four students to find amazing things that were worthy of being displayed on the Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. So thank you for that. <laughs> Kane University was also and is still the producer of It Happened in New Jersey, if you're watching public television, you may have seen those 90-second spots. We have 19 of those created. We just got funding to create 15 more. So I thought maybe you want to see one of them. They're pretty cool. In 1937, the most famous scientist in the world, Albert Einstein, was also the most famous resident of Princeton, New Jersey. A well-known music lover, he found both joy and inspiration in playing the violin throughout his life. When the famed African-American singer Marian Anderson came to Princeton to perform that year, she was refused a room at the Nassau Inn. Hearing of her plight, Einstein offered her the hospitality of his home at 112 Mercer Street. From then on, Anderson was a guest at Einstein's home whenever she traveled to Princeton. Einstein left Germany for good when the Nazis came to power. Having already revolutionized the field of physics, Einstein influenced his new country in other ways. He admired the freedoms enjoyed by U.S. citizens and became one himself in 1940. But he also criticized the racism he observed in his new homeland and became a member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. When Albert Einstein died in Princeton in 1955, he left behind a legacy of creativity, brilliance, and humanity. It Happened Here, New Jersey is a production of Kane University in cooperation with the New Jersey Historical Commission, enriching the present by exploring New Jersey's past. <clears throat> oh.
All these segments are available for you uh, on the YouTube site for the university. Our faculty and students are doing amazing research. I only have a short time to just mention some of them, but the entire list will be on my full speech uh, posted on the web very shortly. Jennifer Krupe was listed on Vogue Italy, and she did an exhibit in the San Francisco Museum of Craft and Design. Professor G Gino Gary moderated a conference on global violence and psychological perspectives at the United Nations. Professor Robin Landa kept producing again and again Amazon bestsellers. Uh, give me a minute. Professor Barry Mascari, Barry, are you here? Got accreditation for our counseling program for seven years. Mia Zamora is working with nine other universities to create a hybrid pedagogy electronic literature program. Norma Bose course was listed by the Huffington Post as one of the 12 most unique college courses in the country. And you all know about Jabo Yu, the fish guy. You know him? Jabo made the cover of Nature, which is the premier scientific publication in the world by finding a 419-year-old fish. That research, if he continues and successful, may actually find the fish that walked on the land. And if he does, we will find who our ancestors are. Our students, over 250 of them, participated in research projects, one of them Kelly Bachochin, the Graduate Researcher of the Year, was accepted, all expenses paid by Northeastern University in their doctoral program of organic chemistry. <laughs> Shortly in October, the activist John Pendergast, the Ann Evans Estabrook uh, Professor of Human Rights will be here will do a whole bunch of conferences for everybody. I hope you participate and say welcome to John Pendergast. And last year, our International Annual Human Rights Conference featured Dr. Kenneth Rutherford. Dr. Rutherford co-founded the International Campaign to Ban Landmines, an organization that was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Dr. Rutherford, after coming to New Jersey and looking at our Human Rights Institute and the things that we do, said this, Kane University is one of the best keep secrets in higher education. It's time for everyone in this room to let that secret out. Tell people how great we are. <laughs> we are again, thanks to Janice Murray Lowry and the, the a student services staff for the fourth year in a row on President Obama's honor roll for service. Now let me give you some numbers that will stun you. 8,000 students last year, and if you compare that with 10 years ago, the number would have been exceedingly small in double digits. 8,000 students volunteered more than 33,800 hours during the last academic year to serve their neighbors. 42 of our students served 11,000 contact hours in the Elizabeth Public School under the Jump Start program, which is part of AmeriCorps. So thank you, students. You bring distinction to the university. <laughs> and yet again, our Greek Senate raised over $12,500 for the Children's Specialized Hospital in Mountainside. The B, the change students in Professor Bowles' uh, group is changing every corner of New Jersey and sometimes the country. One garden, one house painting, and one cleanup at a time. Another way we are getting the word out is through a new medium called Cane Exchange. I hate to say that. Print media is not doing what it's supposed to do, and it's not being read by our students 
fortunate or unfortunate, the facts are what they are. So here's a look of how we're getting the message out to the new generation. Introducing Kane Expedition. In the fall of 2012, Kane wanted a way to engage incoming students in a modern and direct way. At the same time, we wanted to drive traffic to the university's new social media and news site, Kane Exchange. With these goals in mind, we harness the energy of a new school year to launch an online and on-campus interactive social gaming experience, Kane Expedition. We started by hosting a variety of different online contests and challenges, using our social media pages on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram every day for a week. All the clues were integrated with a dynamic website that directed students to the action, KaneExpedition.com. Then we introduced exciting live events designed to welcome students to their university and immerse them in the Kane experience, putting the best of our growing campus in the spotlight. Students were engaged through social media posts, promotional videos, and in-person activities. The unique format allowed all students to have their own experience, no matter their class schedule or daily routine. Soon, our brand could be seen all over campus. Over the course of the campaign, we teased our biggest prize yet, a semester on us. At homecoming, students packed the stands, and one lucky cougar walked out with free tuition for a semester, as well as books, reserve parking, and a brand new computer. Kane Expedition was highly visible throughout the Kane community and beyond, winning a Marcom Award for Outstanding Website and Outstanding Social Media Site, as well as a Collegiate Advertising Award for Social Media Marketing. Average student engagement was over eight minutes per visit, 70% of Kane freshmen attended an expedition event in their first semester. Our Twitter followers more than tripled. Kane Exchange received over 45,000 visits during expedition's first run, with a quarter of them being first-time visitors. After the launch, Kane Exchange received almost 3,000 hits in just one day. Kane Expedition continues to engage incoming students every fall, welcoming them to their campus and encouraging them to get involved in fun, modern ways. Kane Expedition. Connect. Play. Win. With digital media, you can never tell what will happen. Uh, one of the latest things was I got a challenge from one of the board members, my employers, do, do, do you have that? Dr. Ramon Raffolet challenged me to something. Let's see. We don't have that, right? Okay. My attention span is almost as long as the mayor of Elizabeth's, 30 seconds. <laughs> Where is the mayor? Did I pick on him? I accept the ALS ice bucket challenge from my daughter, Lauren Repolet. After the challenge, I will challenge Dawood Ferrari, president of Kane University, Audrey Murray, Kane University, Board of Trustee Ada Morrell, and Board of Trustee Richard Traber. I'm ready for the challenge. Yes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't do that. Do you guys want him to do this? I thought you were my friends. And the good guys are here in the bed. You're not going to do this. Wait. I got a deal for you, okay? Here's the deal. Now I got a reception for you guys later and got a bunch of other things. But have you been to the new Barnes and Nobles? Pretty cool, huh? So here's what, 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 what's gonna happen. <laughs> On September 15, the grand opening of the Green Lane building in the grand opening of Barnes and Nobles I want all of you guys, have you seen the new Escalera, the steps that go into the Green Lane? 
I want all of you to line up, and we will have hundreds of bucket, ice buckets, and I'll be the first one to sit on the first row. And you can drop the ice bucket on me, provided, provided you are the biggest donor to ALS. And I'll match you, and I'll match you dollar for dollar. The biggest donor I will match dollar for dollar for ALS. At the same time, when you get your checkbook out, write a check for Kane University as well. <laughs> Is that a deal? He's not happy. <laughs> he really was planning to do it, wasn't he? I want to close by telling you, you are part of a new cane. Many of you will be here for decades to come. Many of you will be here for a long time to lead and guide and mentor our students to realize their American dream, as you and I have. We now have some of the world-class, best world-class facilities in the nation, some of the best world-class programs in the country, some of the best world-class faculty anywhere, and some of the world-class research being done right here at Kane USA and will be in Wenzhou, China. Just look at what we can do with what we have. We have the resources, we have the people, we have the capacity to be the best. And being the best is what you want to be. Let's get started on a new path. Let's speed up. Let's get Kane University right up in the new orbit. I think you can do it. With your help, we can do it together. We should. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you at the reception in Liberty Hall. Thank you again. Have a fantastic academic year.